Morning guys, welcome back to the channel where today we are on a large EV charging project. We're actually here all this week. We've got 25 chargers going in, four to be working, and the other 21 are going to be dummy back plates ready for the future when the residents make that change to getting an EV. Um, so we're going to be here all week. We've got John Faultless Electrical down here with us for most of it. Uh, today, Go Electric are here giving us a hand, and uh, we've run in the 25mm 5 core, which was an absolute beep. Um, so that's in. And then behind me, we've got the Protus board, which I put up yesterday. And if we go around here, oh, sorry, tripped over, great filming. The cable's currently running along the floor all the way up there, but it will actually be cleated high level with metal P-clips. Um, yeah, so I think let's just cut to the intro. We'll see you the other side. <laughs> <laughs> So as I said guys, got this mounted yesterday. John's currently up in the plant room. He's mounting the 125 amp Luden switch fuse isolator. Catch him up there in a bit. Uh, for now, um, the guys from Go Electric, they're metal P-clipping this bad boy from the other end, starting working their way down. You know, once we're down here, we can get that glanded in. God, I'm a bit too close to the camera there. I didn't like what I saw. I'm currently uh, over here. What I'm doing is I'm prepping a load of the adaptable boxes that are gonna be going along the pillars where there are actual charge points on the pillars or the wall will have an adaptable box and that will basically have um, a three terminal where you go push fit connection for each phase so l1 through to l3 the neutral and the earth and we'll have a an in an out and then a t down to the actual charge point when you're doing multiple like this we have in the past done it where we've wired sort of in and out of each one but that's just a it's just a nightmare so but we're, we're giving this a go with the way go connectors on this one and um yeah we'll see how we get on with that probably be hitting that tomorrow I better get back to drilling these and uh, before I do, Pete's set up, he's going to be cutting some unistracks, we're going to have some tray all along here and um, yeah that'll be our route down to the other end. What I've done here guys, uh, I've got it, I've designed the car park layout in A1 and then, uh, sorry about that, I've then got it printed out and then in each bay we've got all the bays numbered up and then we've got whether they're having a dummy or a working unit in and that's the same sort of all the way down because what we're going to do is we're going down in circuits like that so down there down there and so forth so at each point that's where those whisker boxes will be going so now i'm just getting all them prepped for probably tomorrow i've got my drawing by my side and i can see which base are going to need it so i know how many in each row need a whisker box and it should be nice So guys, bit of progress. Um, I've been trying out the 2070 with the pole clip and fit. Uh, first time using it, literally bought it a couple of days ago for this job specifically. And um, as you see behind me, I've got a load of D-lines on the um, precast concrete. On occasion, you do hit a spot where you've got to move it along a bit, and that's natural with that type of material, but it's actually been working an absolute treat. It's certainly sped the process up. And then, um, yeah, behind me, turn this around guys are getting the tray work down uh, all the way down that end so from the, that location we can then take all of the circuits going that way down to then come down those pillars yeah it's uh, been a fun day so far welcome back guys it's another day we're here in this cold basement car park just getting some more of these prepped to go on the wall john's behind me up the ladder there he's spit gunning down this um concrete block here so we can put the D lines up, so we're spitting them up now. We can then continue this circuit down. And our aim today is to complete the circuit going this way and then make a start on the next one as well. Um, so yeah, it's going to be gonna be another day's hard graft. So yeah, while we're getting these prepped, he's up there. And then behind us over there, Pete is hiding down in that corner away from my um, my little hand i got here. Look, you know, a little hand making its way to the camera, I'm waving everyone. He's uh, hiding away from getting slapped from that. So he's down there putting the joiners in the tray. Uh, let's get to it. Just uh, just up by one of these uh, Wago junction boxes where we've used the old Wago three-way connectors that go up to 16 mil. And we need two buddy together because of the amount of cables and it's three phase, so there's five of them. So we've got these little Wago jumper pins and they just push in like I've done down these the link two together so yeah just jumping on making off some of these we've 
been having an absolute mare here today. We've making some good progress down this first row, but the cable we've been sent, which is an MYY cable, <laughs> is the worst cable to strip I've ever used in my life. Um, so we're seeing if we can source something else for the rest of it. It's just an absolute bugger. Um, but yeah, it is what it is for now. Nothing wrong with the cable in terms of the quality of it and stuff as a cable, but to strip, it's I've never seen anything like it. It's it's taking like to strip back like the bits in uh, strip back those bits in there like one cable. It takes like twenty minutes, which is insane. So I'm going to jump on that. Sorry guys, the lighting is not great in here. I This is one of the boxes with the Wago dim rail stuff in. I'd normally want that looking a bit neater, but these are 10 mil solid core, uh, high tough, so they're not the easiest to work with. And then we've got six mil coming down to the charger. The 10 is going all the way down and that's due to voltage drop on the circuit. Um, but yeah, that's what they're looking like. Um, we've got probably 25 of those to do. As I said earlier, we've got the little um, jumpers in to link two together because it's not because it's three phase but because we've got more than um three cables in some of them and they can do three on a singular or you can jump them together and then you've got six morning guys it's another day on the job um just made off this armored i'm making it off now getting it in this proteus ev board um john Faultless electricals at the other end. He's got the Luden isolator on the wall. That's been on the wall a few days now. He's just prepping it for the shutdown we've got uh, in a couple of hours today to get it connected in. And then it can also be left off in the Luden switch fuse if the fuse is out of the carrier. So this isn't live. We're just getting this in at the same stage. It makes complete sense to do so. So got my wee hard torque driver out. I've got these in. I'm just going to whiz through and just torque them. Uh, I've got it set up to 2.5 on here. Um, so on the wee hard. It jumps from 2.4 to 2.6, it goes up in like 0.2 increments, so I've got it bang in the middle of the two for the 2.5. So we just whiz through these and uh, if they're talked, or get them talked, sorry, I know they're not talked. Check the last one again. Perfect. So, um, yeah, they're all talked up, got that to get on, etc. And um, yeah, we've we've had a bit of a slow go on the job. We've we've got basically the first circuit done, which has the most charges on. But um, you might have seen the reel already on Instagram. We've been sent cable from Yes. Ordinarily, we're always Doncaster cables, like whatever type of cable we're using, it's Doncaster. But we've been sent this other cable from I think Backed Cables, and it has not been a joy to strip. As I think I mentioned earlier on in the video, it's been an absolute ball lake. Um, I think, yeah, stripping back like a 300 mil length, 13 mil length, it literally does take about 20 minutes. It, I'm not, you know, not even joking, not complaining. Uh, all three of us down there have had an absolute mare with it. So that's saying something. So I have reached out to the wholesaler and said, you need to sort this out for the rest of it. We're not, we're not using that, that, um, uh, I won't say, I can't say on camera what I would say, but we're not using that rubbish. Um, so yeah, we'll see what they come up with. But, um, from any other job like this moving forward, I'm insisting we use Doncaster. It's way easier to strip, but, um, yeah. Pete's down there somewhere, second fixing the easies on this circuit so we can get them all buttoned up and then we'll be on the next row. Um, we initially planned to have this job done this Friday, we've been here since Monday, it just ain't gonna happen, like there's no point, you know, chasing something that ain't gonna work in terms of, yeah, that's a strange analogy. Um, we're never gonna get the numbers Fridays, so we've already made them where it's gonna roll into next week. I don't wanna rush anything to try and get it done, it's not worth it. Um, we've struggled with the cable, um, the spit gun has sped things up, but in areas we've not been able to use that also on that concrete slab. So again, slowed things down where I thought we'd gain some time. We, we haven't really, but it, it has been good and I can see how it would be good on other projects. Um, but that's where we're all at. I better get cracking because we've got a fair amount to do. See you in a bit. <laughs> if only. <laughs> oh, this is the life, hey, Puss Puss. Hey, what a life. No working, all done for the day, nothing to do in the evening. There's a good girl. Now, do you want to be able to relax like that at the end of the working day? Get home, get changed, pop on the sofa, grab yourself a beer, glass of wine, cup of tea or a coffee or your drink of choice, and relax with your family, 
and uh, for me it's my partner and my beloved Puss Puss, the little pussy cat, um, because I know I do, and Powered Now has helped me do that. Now it's a job management tool that allows you to run your business from anywhere in the world, so on the go, key. Now I use Powered Now for quoting, invoicing, scheduling jobs, uploading notes from surveys, I use all of its features, but my favourite one at the moment it's when you send that invoice, you can see when the customer's opened it, you can see when they've read it, so you don't need to chase them up. But I think rather than explain all of the features, it's better that you take a look for yourself. You can sign up for a 14 day free trial, no card required. And then if you click on the link in the description below, for a 75 pound upfront payment for six months on the business plan, you'll get the following six for free. So that's 12 months for the price of six. Don't miss out, click on the link, give it a go, and we'll see you there. So the good thing about these easies um, is when you want a charger that's just a dummy, so you want it to be ready for future use in terms of claiming grants and things like that, it's all wired up. Some people just leave them in the actual box. We prefer to get them actually in. So it's all wired up. And then easy have these like dummy front cover plates that literally clips on the front and then protects and makes safe determinations there and so no one can get to them. And then it's got a little retaining screw that goes in the bottom. And then it just does up like so, so obviously they can't get the cover off then. And uh, as well as the screw to get the cover off, you need the little security pin, like a little pin so that goes underneath, you pull and it releases it. But that's just obviously some added protection and it's a, it's a star head, so security style. Um, so the first circuit now, 11 charges on is done in terms of wired with it up, with the exception we've left the one off that's working, it's all wired. It's not connected at the other end yet, none of that's live. And we've left that off so we can scan the working one in when we go to commissioning the circuits. So I think what we'll do, we're, we were hoping to make a start on the second row yesterday, but we didn't, so we're going to be starting on that next. I'm going to prep some more whisker boxes. Pete's going to do spit gun and uh, SDS where needed, where the spit gun doesn't work, get the D lines in, and um, we're, we're waiting for a callback from Yes with a resolution to this shoddy cable we've been given. And when I say short, I just want to make it clear, there's nothing wrong with the cable in terms of it being unsafe or fit for use. It's perfectly fine as a cable in terms of its use. Obviously the current it can handle, it's not damaged in any way. It's just the outer sheathing, the black sheathing. There's obviously something wrong in the manufacturing with like the powder and stuff they'd normally put in to make it easier to strip. It hasn't been. So there's nothing wrong with the safety of it. It's absolutely fine to use. It's just an absolute bugger to strip. Um, so just want to make that clear. I don't want anyone to think we're, we're fitting something that's subpar because we're not. It's absolutely fit for purpose in terms of taking electrical current through it. Uh, it's just an absolute nightmare to actually strip that outer layer off. Um, so we're having a blast with that. I'm hoping to get some other stuff down there today so we don't have to keep using it because it has slowed us down. I actually think it's probably going to add you know, at least a day, maybe two to the job because of using that cable. So we want to get it out of the way quick and not keep using it. Um, but yeah, so I'm down the other end of the car park now, you can see how big the car park is. That's the entrance right down there. And uh, there's 52 bays in here total, but only 25 are participating in the dummy or working setup. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. All right, so just cutting this piece of 10 mil high stuff from, um, yeah. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna cut that. I've been using for a little while now, the Jonard um, ratchet cars, they're pretty decent. As all right, it does, obviously, you just click around, don't allow it to lock in, and then uh, plow through it. Look at that, grip of a pipe, and haven't even, haven't even slowed down going through there. It's a mixture of my hand strength, and these are new. I don't know if you saw my reel uh, the other day, where I was using the Jonar cable gun for cutting plastic cable ties, but um, yeah, it's really good. You just put the butt of the cable tie head up to the end there, line it in, or done. If I'll do one on camera and then I'll, I'll hop over to the time lapse because you've seen it before, it's a really good tool. So uh, I'll pick one, I'm relatively close to the camera, the best I can, put that in, butt it up, flush, flush, super flush, the royal flush in fact. So we're on, we're firmly on circuit two now, guys. Now I'm done cable running uh, behind me, a couple of dummies. We've got a Wago enclosure with the DIN rail mount for the ship. Wago, so we've got the Proteus board. The first two circuits in the board. The board is terminated, but it's completely dead the other end. The fuses are out of the carriers. Um, so the second circuit's running along there and then up and down. 
and then basically down there you want to see John in the background I say in the background he's heading towards camera we, we've got circuit two well underway we've got the boxes on the go and uh, yeah getting there slowly it's gonna go well into next week we've underestimated the amount of time it's gonna take to uh, get these cables round and um, yeah as you know we're not happy with the type of cable we're using here from um, that <laughs> that cable um, so yeah Doncaster all the way so up in the the mains cupboard now the little plant room I'm going to hand you over to John of Faultless Electrical to just give us a run through of what's going on in here and uh, what it's feeding that's been installed over to you John we're rolling we're rolling right -o. so we've come off of the switch down here so we've had to have a big shutdown um, which went reasonably well um, we've run our flexi tails up here and into this new 100 amp switch, so some switch fuse. So inside here, we've got a fuse is disconnected because we're still working over in, but it's live at the top. Um, just the carriers to go on there, and then there's this, the banjo to finish off in there. But that's feeding what's that five core, 25 mil, running, yeah. running down. What's the run? How many meters? About probably about 70 meters, I think. I'd allowed for 85 meters of cable. I always want to have a bit more uh, than needed in case the route slightly changes or you bit, know bit things from, happen. Bit from scrap line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, so let's run down. So I had the quite it was actually bucketing down. So I had a nice job of being in here. Let's just up there, and run around there, and then it's across the ceiling in the foyer. And then I'm sure you've seen it on other parts of the video. But I've got the cream number to be fair. So uh, he's done a top job. Cheers, mate. But yeah, well. Uh, We'll uh, cut back down to the car park. Cheers for that, John. No worries, mate. So we made it back down to the car park, as I said in the last clip, guys, but it's not on the same day, because if you know John, like I know John, he likes a beer. So we went for a beer after that little uh, little scene up in the plant room. Um, so it's a new week. We, we're we battling for it. It's been fun. Um, second row is wired. Just need to second fix it, get it in the boxes. Third row is wide in terms of the sub main running down the road, it's just the six mil drop out of the whisker boxes. And um, yeah, we've, we've made some good progress. It's been taking a lot longer than we thought, but yeah, sub mains down there. It's just that one to pull down, down there, get some adaptable boxes finished off down here. And we can wire the chargers. Um, yeah, we like a challenge. Um, it's taking a bit longer, but it is what it is. It'd be a nice job at the end of it. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get on to it. What's Pete doing? He's uh, looking in there, look, his little Snickers vest. Zoom in on that. What a specimen of a man. All right, so I'm near the end of one of the roads in the car parks now. We're just working our way through. It's just me and Pete here uh, this week, working our way through, getting the old whisker boxes done, and then I'm just getting this charging cable in so on some of them where we've got the main circuit running down one side we've had to come up and over the ceiling fire rated fixings and down to a charge on a different level um we so yeah just working our way through these and then we're on to the next one over um, trying to get an area buttoned up in time and then we're we're done in that area other than obviously coming back to test when we're at another stage so yeah just like to do things in sort of some sort of order, so we're clearing an area and then moving on to the next one. So, um, as you can hear, Pete's making a bloody racket behind me, um, which is going to sound awesome on this because it's such an echoey building. You probably can't even hear me speaking, so. but um, yeah, it's uh, we certainly warm today because we've got the power now, and they're kind enough to send me out a power now hoodie with our brand new one as well, so that's pretty cool. Um, so we've got that on. And um, yeah, Power Now, if you don't know, is a job management tool. Check them out, description will be in the below. So, hopefully, this is our last day on the job. I'm looking forward to having it done. We're nearly there. I'm just starting to make off the board. So, we've got most of the supplies in, or the loads out, should we say, to the vehicle charging circuits. The three of the four in. Need to get this last one in up here, get that in, and then do the links up from the MCBs that are going to be supplying these are CCBs. And um, we're almost there for in here. This has the easy equalizer um, Eaton meter in, and it will have the equalizer in, and then we're gonna have another one of these either there or there. It's gonna have a router in, 
and we've got some uh, access points going in the car park just to omit the Wi-Fi for vehicle charging and app purposes um, because 4G is not an option down here. Um, yeah, so let's hop over to a time lapse. We'll get that in together and uh, we'll see what she's looking like afterwards. Okay, so I'm still by the board location. Um, we've got a router going in, been running around some Cat 6, got some uh, access points. So we've got all that to connect and tidy up. But it's not the finished art behind me, so you can still slack me off if you want in the comments, but uh, yeah, we're not done yet. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. We've got data now going down there, and then it runs around to two locations in the car park. Pete's calling me, better see what he wants. Above me here, we've got uh, a TP access point, TP link access point. We've got a couple of them in the car park that are emitting a Wi Fi signal. So, obviously, we can get the EZs connected to it. Um, down here, there are, there are spots of signal, but it isn't strong enough or reliable enough that they're going to work correctly with using the app or using the Fuse app because this is going on Fuse back office management. So, um, yeah, we've got the cable all the way back up to the top, um, and we've then uh, unfortunately found out the router we've patched out of doesn't actually have any uh, signal being emitted out of it it shows the signal but when you connect there's no internet that's our mistake we should have checked uh it's something we can get over so that's not a problem um but yeah we're, we're, we're nearly nearly there um so we're just going to stop for a spot of lunch and um yeah we'll uh we'll get you back here once we're done uh the internet's not going to get sorted today um so it, it may well be tomorrow, it might be next week, but we'll bring you back with us for the final segment of the video. So for now, see ya. So guys, we've overcome the faux pas we made. We've now got internet down here in this car park, which is unheard of. Um, well, obviously not, because we've actually done it, but um, these car parks, if you don't know, if you're ever looking to do a vehicle charging project like this in an underground car park, you will need to get Wi-Fi down here. The way we've done it, as I've said, um, there's going to be a hard wide internet line going in but temporarily we've installed a 4g router with a vodafone sim up the top our cat 6 coming down here is now patched into that that goes into a switch up there and then in the car park we've got a couple of access points of one around there and then one further down that's now emitting a strong enough signal down here to cover the whole area so it's going to pick up all of the four working charges we've got and then when people in the future swap out the dummies for working ones they have no problems connecting and it's vital that you do have wi-fi one for the back office which is fuse you could also be using easy obviously if you don't want to use fuse but here they're going to want to charge the residents for using it so fuse is who we partner with for that um, and it also means there's actually a Wi-Fi signal down here now So if people are down here doing something to their car or whatever they can hop on the Wi-Fi uh, It's all secure and we've set up usernames and passwords so not any old Tom, Dick and Harry can connect to it um, Yeah, that's an absolute result. Let's hop up the top. We'll do a walkthrough coming from up there down to here to see What we did up there how the cable comes down here and then um, all we're going to be doing is commissioning and handing over So we'll, we'll, we'll see you there. So we'll start at the top. So this is um, our 125 amp Luden switch fuse. Um, it's got the fuses in the carriers in here. It's in the on position at the moment because obviously we've got it live down the end, nice and clearly labeled. And um, basically, got some tails coming out and it's fed from this unit, with big old panel board, makes its way up down there, along above the dry riser and then out here. Let's go on out and see what's going on. It's out here, it's above the ceiling metal tie wraps um let's open the door yes yeah, so we've got metal tie wraps um to metal eyelets that are in the ceiling we've got an access point here which enabled us to then see the cable coming through this way and then go out that way and that's the tp link 4g router we've currently put in whiz around here fly around you can come with me let look at the ground another access point up here that gave us access cable goes through here comes down the wall there and then along down there then comes out down here, straight down there. The only bit I'm not quite happy with, but there's nothing else we really could have done, is that section. It's all we could really do with the size of the cable. It then follows all the way around down here, and then where that roller door is and the door that's open, the single door, that's where the panel board is. So um, you see us back in there in a minute doing some commissioning. Right guys, we're now charging, we're all commissioned. 
I haven't gone through that because you probably commissioned an easy before. Um, so I'm in the Fuse app. I'm assigned to this charger. So now in the Fuse app, I'm away charging. Obviously, as we've got the EVSE tester plugged in, it's not allowing like seven or 22 kilowatts to come out because it's it's just simulating a car plugging in to check all of the operational features work. Um, so at the moment, I've spent no money. Um, they're set up to take a pound pre-authorization and you set that up as the installer when uh, when setting up Fuse and then whatever the agreed per kilowatt hour rate is or pounds per hour rate for the use. So we've got four working ones in here. Each one is for a specific resident. So that resident only has access to that charger. And likewise, um, if they were to ever have a visitor come down, we can allow access to other people. So we could, if they notify us that Mrs. Mrs. Robinson come down once a week, we can add them to the back end to give them access to that charger. So Fuse is really easy to set up. It's super customizable. We've used a different company in the past and I found it an absolute nightmare. So we've we've moved over to Fuse and it's been so seamless. So if Kurt is watching this from Fuse, Kurt Sanchez, absolute legend, uh, been so helpful in getting this set up. And now on the next one, we'll be able to do it without bothering them. It's just really easy. Uh, it's a fair price. And um, yeah, so basically another cool thing about this. So you might see at the bottom, there's a hold to stop button. So you literally hold that in takes a few seconds and then stopping session. So it can take up to 30 seconds to actually do that. And then um, that's pretty cool because you can basically do that from up in the flat. You can stop the sessions. You haven't got to come down there to do it, which is nice. Obviously you can leave your car plugged in, the session's actually stopped. So all in all, I'm really happy this is now finished. Um, it's been a tough job. We've had some obstacles to overcome uh, with the Wi-Fi and the cabling we got there there's nothing we can't do and like i've said if you saw on instagram it's never about the mistakes you make it's what you do to overcome them and get around them and uh, get back on the winning track so that's about it from us I really hope you've enjoyed the video um if you have or haven't leave some comments below don't mind either way but i'd rather you liked it i, I, I like to think we're trying to make some good content that's easy for you to watch uh, however if you think we can improve what we're doing Drop some ideas below. I'm always open for new ideas. And what I will say is if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, leave some comments below, and we'll see you on the next one.